Hey everybody and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to texture an asset that has different uh, types of materials applied to it and the blending mode between those two materials is rather unique. Now, like I said, this kind of came in as a question from one of the subscribers. He wanted to know how you can create something like this and render it out with V-Ray. And the, I actually went ahead checked out some other uh, types of um, similar materials and well there is a bunch of them around and generally they're used around uh, vases and I thought it would be a fun thing to actually show you how you can uh, paint something like this and get it to render well in V-Ray. Now in the past we would have created this thing just within uh, 3ds max and we would try to get a blending mode to maybe go with a V-Ray dirt but now we have access luckily for us now we have access to substance painter which makes things a hell of a lot easier so i'm going to show you how to do it uh, in there and then bring it back into uh, 3ds max to render it out so this is what you need in order to uh, start uh, inside Substance Painter, you need to have your model. And in here, you can see that I have the teapot that comes uh, with uh, over here. There we go, the teapot that comes with Max. But what I've done is I've actually done some quick modeling, made it into one whole piece, gave it a small shell to have some thickness. And what I've actually done is I've put an unwrap UVW on it. So if you open this thing up, you're going to see that this thing has a proper UVW unwrap. Now, this is a very, very important thing that you must have if you're going to send your model into Substance Painter. Now, if I un and the isolate, what you're going to notice is that over here, the teapot that I have named teapot LPR low poly is 15,000 polygons. And also in this uh, scene, another thing that I have is the teapot high poly, which is 120,000, which is the exact, the exact same poly uh, model, but with a turbo smooth on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export both of these versions and I'm going to uh, go back to Substance Painter and I will meet you there. All right, here we are inside Substance Painter. This is the 2019.1.0 version. So if you're watching this now, this is, I think, the latest version. If you're watching this later and you have a, a newer version, then I'm pretty sure n not too much is going to change and you will be able to follow along. So I'm going to start off with new. In the template here, I'm going to use uh, non-PBR specular glossiness from algorithmic. I'm going to use a document resolution of 2K. We can change this thing on the fly, so it's not a problem. So in the file, I'm going to choose the teapot LP that we just exported out uh, or whatever you have exported on your side. I'm going to click OK. This will load up that model inside Substance Painter. All right, awesome. So before we start doing anything to this, what we want to do is we want to click over here in the texture set settings. And from here, we want to bake some of the maps that we will be using. So I'm going to click over here and change the output size to maybe a 4K resolution. So we bake really nice crisp textures. We don't want to have an ID because we don't have anything in there. And here is where we want to click and choose the high poly version of this teapot. Now, uh, if we don't have a high poly version, what we can do is just click over here and that is going to use the same exact model to bake on its own or bake a, a whatever geometry it has. And we'll use the low poly as a high poly. Now we scroll down here, we have match always and by mesh name, but since my uh, low poly and high poly are both the same object and we don't have multiple objects. I don't need to change this. So having uh, done all of this, I'm going to click on bake default mesh maps. And after waiting for a few seconds, I'll be right back with you guys and we can continue on. 
And as soon as the baking is finished, which took about a minute to get those nice crisp um, uh, textures, we can see that over here, all of these maps have been populated. So we have all of these maps that we can work with. So for now, I'm going to close this. I'm going to go over here and press on the remove selected layer because this is the layer that comes pre-packed. So select this. And now let's start logically looking at this uh, pot and see what we want to create. Now, the reference that I was uh, looking at is something like this. So we have a color glaze on top of the clay underside of this thing. And this thing comes in varieties. So you can have the clay on the bottom. It can has a, you can have a, a nice glaze on top of it, or it can be something like a terracotta, a very, very rough look. And I actually like this because I want to use it as a base on which I can later on put on the actual glazing. And as you can see here, when you have a terracotta on the inside or, or on the base and the glazing goes on top, the glazing covers up all of those details that would come from over here. So knowing that, what we can do is logically separate this thing into two simple steps. The first step would be to create this material. So create something that would be like the terracotta or the clay. So having uh, this in front of me, what I can do is start building this material. So to do that, I'm going to go over and add a fill layer. Now, once I click that, the fill layer will allow me to have some information to input. The first thing that I want to change is I want to change the color, which is going to be the diffuse or the uniform color. The great thing about this is once you, choose, uh, once you click over here and you click on this eyedropper, you can click and hold it and move it around. So what, whatever your eyedropper is above, it will choose that color. So if I go over to my other screen and go over on top of the actual color that I have in my image, it's going to choose that color. So I went over and chose right about here. So the darker color. This will give me that color to use. Now, if I take a look at my image in here, I can see that I have some nice small cracks and details in here. So how do we get that thing to appear? Well, actually quite easy. All we got to do is just input something into our height map. And that is again, very easy with Substance Painter. You can go over into procedurals and choose a procedural map from here. Now, when we were doing this thing in the Twitch stream, I think that I used some of the concrete grunges. So grunge maps, concrete, and we have some different maps in here. We can choose maybe something like, let's see. Well, the crack one is interesting, especially for terracotta. So let's see how this thing is going to look. I can choose and drag it over into height. And I can see that it's kind of too much. Let's see what else we have over here. Maybe this first one. All right, much better. Now, the information is in there, although I might want to change the scale here. So let's go scale up to three. All right, much more detail, much more broken up. It's great. But now the problem here that we are going to face is that at the moment, Substance Painter is taking my UVs into account. And I can see that over here we have this line, which is more or less where the UVs are broken up. And I can see that line over here. It's probably spanning down here. There we go again. So not the ideal thing. So what I want to do is, first of all, I'm going to change the projection from UV projection down to triplanar projection. This will get rid of that issue and I will no longer have that seam from the UV cut. Now, having changed that, 
we need to address the elephant in the room. And if we compare both of these, we're going to see that this is way too strong. So we need to make it a bit lighter or a bit more weak as a result. That's, again, very easy to do. All we got to do is choose our height layer over here and over here in the opacity just reduce this thing down to something more manageable maybe like mm, five or six yeah there we go much much better and something that we probably would like to have now the thing is that if you take a look at over here it's a very very sharp De or detailed look while we have a bit of a blurry look to actually remedy that what we're going to do is open up my texture settings and in here for the viewport i'm going to change this size this is the uh, 2048 that we chose at the beginning where we imported the model when i told you you can change this thing on the fly so just so we are 100% sure that we like the details that we just added. I'm going to switch this thing over to 4K resolution so I can see exactly what is going on. And this is, I think that it might be a bit too strong as a result. So let's go over and decrease this thing just a tiny bit more. Maybe like 3 or 4. Nah. All right, let's just click. All right, four. All right, awesome. So I can work with this. And I'm happy with how this thing looks. But now, let's see what do we uh, else can we see from this image. If we take a look at closer, we can see that other than the small breakage that we have here with the small indentations, we also have a difference in color. So how we can control the that is again very simple all we got to do is simply go in add another fill layer and this time we're going to change the diffuse again with the color picker to uh, something lighter there we go i'm going to change this thing back to diffuse so we can see the differences there we go, something very, very lighter. I might actually make this thing just a tiny bit. There we go, like this. And now, the way to break up this texture is right click and add a black mask to this. This black mask will control where the lighter color is going to appear. So in here, what I'm gonna do is go over add effect, add a generator, or I can add a fill layer and control it there. So let's go, let's try with the fill layer first. So with the fill layer, what we can do now is we can again go to the procedurals. And from here, let's choose something that's going to control where the lighter color are going to appear. So we can try any of these grunge maps or black and white spots. So let's just pull in one over the grayscale and see how this thing looks. Right away, I can see some breakage, but let's go through a couple of different ones. All right. Well, actually, instead of doing it with a lighter color, let's just darken up this color a bit more so I can better yet see more details like this. All right. So I can see that I have some breakage in the color. And again, we have this uh, same issue with um, the, the border here. So I'm going to change the UV projection to triplanar. And I need to change the same thing over here. So the UV projection to be triplanar on the actual mask. That's going to fix that issue. There we go. So let's actually just go ahead and try a couple of different ones. I think this is not bad. If I can also go ahead and rotate this thing 90 degrees, but this will give me, let's compare it. Now we probably want to get something more different. Let's go 
Well, give me a sec. Let me just uh, go through these and I'll be right back with you guys. And after going through a couple of these, what I went in the end is actually this Grunge Rust Fine. And it's going to give me a nice breakup in the information that I have over here. So with and without that image, as you can see, now it looks a lot closer to what we have here. So now the only thing that's probably left to do is I'm going to go back to my first layer and decrease the glossiness of this thing. So I'm going to go bring it down a lot. All right. So let's go to 0 0.2. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So again, glossiness of 0 0.2. There we go. So now this looks a lot closer to what we are seeing over here. Okay. So create a folder, call it base clay. Let's just name everything right base color call this thing base color break it select both of them put them inside the folder here and now we can continue creating the second layer well actually i just noticed that we've been going on for a while now so i will continue on this thing in the next video where we're going to create the second shader and just like that i hope you guys had fun in this one you managed to learn something new if you enjoyed the video then click the like button and if you're not subscribed now is a great time to do so if you would like to support me and the channel then the support links are below in the description of the video and as always Thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next video where we will continue with our project. Peace.